Um, so how do I introduce Joel? Um, I'll, I'll start with some facts, maybe. Um, <laughs> Joel's the general manager of Orchard and Grove in Austin, Texas, who focus on improving the Mac experience for companies that use Apple products. Um, previous to that, he was enterprise systems engineering manager at Apple, um, doing all sorts of crazy things with large numbers of Macs in large, complicated environments. Um, recently, Joel has been helping people um, deal with what he refers to as casual binding of Active Directory. Um, prior to Apple, Joel was a frequent speaker at uh, lots of events. Um, Macworld, WD, WWDC, uh, conferences such as that. Um, he last spoke at Xworld in 2005, so... Um, Hopefully we've updated some of the slides since then, Joel. Um, <laughs> you know, no, that wasn't in the list. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and Joel also um, was instrumental in setting up the AFP548.com blog, which was a great resource for the community. So um, without any further ado, I will introduce Joel and building an MDM agent. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Marcus. <laughs> Who, who was here in 2005? Wow. That means I'm old. <laughs> so I've been given a list of words that don't mean the same in Australian as American uh, so that I will hopefully uh, uh, will not violate any conduct policy. So I, apologies in advance if, if I have any Americanisms. I don't think so, though. Um, but thank you all for being here. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, the AUC committee. This is great. It has been a long time since I've been here, but uh, it was actually in the same room. We were doing conversations around Active Directory. Uh, this was, 2005 would have been maybe 10.3. <laughs> it gets a little hazy back then, but uh, the AD plugin had just come out and it was an amazing time to do all some really cool stuff. So it's, it's very fun to be back here again and to be doing this. Um, so you're, you're gonna be hearing from me twice. I, I'm here now and, and then I'm here tomorrow, unfortunately. So uh, if you don't get all your questions in today, you can, you can ask me tomorrow as well. Um, but as Tony and I were talking, as we were kind of running up to this, one of the thoughts was, well, if you're in the Mac management business, um, whether you want it or not, MDM is kind of going to be a reality that you're going to have to deal with. Um, if you have any sizable, as you would say, a state, right, of Macs, um, MDM is going to be something that you need to do more and more with. And it's potentially unfortunate that MDM can't do everything that you'd like to do. Uh, you may have uh, command line tools and other things like that that you'd like to run from an MDM push, uh, and that's not 100% there. So one of the thought exercises I've been going along uh, recently is kind of how to fill in those gaps with some of those things. So we've got a little session here on kind of exploring what MDM can do, exploring what it can't do, and maybe some ways that you can expand it uh, using existing tools and uh, a little bit of glue and bailing wire to uh, put that all together. Uh, so, without further ado, um, this is where I am now, as Marcus did such a nice job of introducing me. Uh, we're purveyors of handcrafted macOS software. Uh, forget this iOS stuff, I think that's a fad. Um, I don't know that it's going to be around for a long time, so I, we're sticking with the Mac, uh, mostly because there's a wide open space there uh, where others haven't been. Uh, you may know me from Nomad, um, that's Carry the Caribou. No Caribou were hurt in the creation of that logo. Uh, but we will not be talking about Active Directory today. That's tomorrow, right? This is all a thinly veiled pitch for the session tomorrow at 4 o'clock, uh, which I expect everyone to make sure their flights do not leave until after that. Uh, so I had put this in the session title that it was going to be a modest proposal about how to use MDM to do dangerous things. And uh, a couple people said, you know that's like a really weird Jonathan Swift uh, article. And I said, yes, but we won't be eating children here. Um, but <laughs> much like uh, Jonathan Swift's modest proposal, we weren't entirely certain. What I'm presenting to you here is going to be a little more of a thought experiment. Um, we wanted to kind of get into what MDM is, what it can't do, and then have a conversation around maybe how you can merge some of those pieces together. Uh, I'm not necessarily suggesting that what I'm going to do and what I'm going to show you and what I'm going to demo is going to be 100% right for your environment. 
but I'm hoping that by creating a conversation around the management things that you as an admin either want to do or need to do will help promote the conversation between us as admins, us as vendors, us as consumers, and try to create a more robust environment for this. So with that as kind of the opening um, pitch, um, gratuitous keynote animations, you know, we're kind of looking into a little bit of a crystal ball here and uh, kind of imagining uh, some other opportunities that might be out there. So before we start, though, we got to kind of talk about MDM, the goods and the bads of it, and uh, what's been going on. Uh, so who's using an MDM service of some form or another? Right, almost everyone in the in the room now. Um, like I said, it's kind of no longer an optional, uh, and just another gratuitous keynote. There we go. This is the good MDM. So MDM is great. It provides a lot of options. Um, I, I tried to phrase this in a positive way, but it is becoming more mature. <laughs> In, in that it's, it's a little more consistent, working better. Um, it's a great idea. It's leveraging APNS, Apple Push Notification Services. It is instantaneous. Uh, I think that conveys culturally right air quotes. Um, uh, so it's instantaneous, which when it works is really, really cool. Um, when it doesn't work, it can be infuriating. Uh, it's also kind of nice in that Apple brings a lot of the infrastructure in that the whole APNS push notifications a lot of the MDM APIs and everything else is brought by Apple. So there's some very good things about that in that between the commercial MDM solutions that are out there, Jamf certainly included as they've done a lot of MDM work, there is some consistency around how it works and what you can do with it. Of course, the side effect of that is it is kind of very consistent and that it's hard to have differentiation between some of your solutions because the MDM API itself is kind of on rails. There's a fixed 30 or 40 different commands that MDM can push, and those may not cover all of your needs that you may have as an admin in your environment. Um, it, it's multi-platform, and I say that a little bit in jest, and that it is iOS and Mac, uh, so multi-platform of, of Apple platforms. Um, and there's some goods and bads to that, right, in that you can have one system that's managing all of your iOS devices, and in a fairly similar way, managing all of your Mac devices as well. All right. But of course, there is some inconsistencies between that. If you've ever gone through a DEP enrollment and you've picked what screens to show and what screens not to show, uh, especially uh, now as more screens show up all the time, it does get a little confusing as to what's relevant for iOS and what's relevant for Mac. And so by throwing everything into the same bucket has caused a little bit of confusion there. So this is the MDM, the good stuff, right? Um, now, oh, gratuitous pop there, all right. Uh, you can see I was doing these slides after we went to the meetup last night. Um, MDM bads. Uh, this is the most evil config file I could come up with with a little bit of a red tint there. Um, the, the biggest thing is that MDM is kind of a one-way communication. When you do a push, when you make a profile happen, when you do something from an MDM service, it goes down to the Mac, goes down to the iOS device, the iOS device grabs it, does something with it, but it doesn't really have a great way of reporting back. All right? So you do have a bit of a one-way communication. And this was something that's been bothering me for a bit. In some things, that works, right? If I have a configuration profile that says your screensaver should always go on after 30 seconds. That's something that's constant. When I push that profile, I know it's going to be there. When I take that profile away, that configuration goes away. But when I'm an admin and I want to do one-time commands, when I want to do things that are kind of do it once, give me some sort of result, and then follow some sort of workflow based upon that result, it's a much different world, right? And having that fire and forget, that one-way only communication is then a bit more of a detriment. Um, you'll notice that there are some items here that are both on the good list and on the bad list. Uh, APNS being one of them. Uh, who had to open up the entire 17 network uh, for their environment? <laughs> who had to have a very long conversation with their security team around why a whole class A needed to be opened up? who's also had conversations about why maybe that whole class A doesn't cover everything, because Akamai and a few other uh, services pop into that. And then you have to have 64 million IP addresses or whatever else, plus a few other thousand that you have to include in that. So APNS obviously has some detriments to it as well. Instantaneous, still in the air quotes for the same reasons. Um, the fact that Apple brings part of the infrastructure is also both good and bad. All right. Uh, it's great in that it's less hosting costs for yourselves, less management, things like that, uh, but then you're not master of your own domain anymore, uh, and it's quite possible that other 
ancillary problems could happen that aren't related to you that may cause APNS to you stop working. Uh, and even harder when APNS doesn't work, it is a bit of a bear to do some of the troubleshooting around that, right? Because you don't own a lot of those pieces. Again, it's multi-platform. It's iOS and Mac, goods and bads to that. Um, but th the thing for me when I was thinking about this is that it's much more of the limited command set. Uh, there are many more things under heaven and earth that are dreamt of under the MDM APIs. Um, I believe that Apple will continually improve, as they are, uh, and will continue to create more and more feature sets on the MDM API. However, it may be two, three, four years before you get to the point of where you need to be. And as an administrator, there's a lot of things that you'd like to push the boundaries with that are maybe not available on that. So how do you get around that? Uh, gratuitous keynote pop. Um, an example is, you know, some of these MDM commands install application, all right? So that installs an application. It's really cool. Um, it's a little complicated is how it gets implemented. It was a little less than uh, effective in some of the earlier versions of Mac OS. Uh, with High Sierra, it's a lot better, so that's good. You can list certificates, you can list users. Security info is an MDM command. Um, and much of this is hidden behind whatever MDM service that you're using, right? These things are not stuff that you as an admin are normally going to be affected by. Uh, but if you haven't and you do have a developer account, I would encourage you over a glass of wine to go read the MDM API uh, documentation. Uh, because it does have a good understanding of what MDM can do. Plus, as an administrator, as anyone that's looking for an MDM solution, it'd be very good for you to understand what the Apple API allows. And then when you're looking at an MDM service that you may use, you can decide for yourself whether they're using the fullest of the API set that is available to you. Um, so ideally, you won't have to see much of this, but this is some of the basic commands that it can do. Uh, there are about 20 or 30 of them, um, but they are kind of limited. And again, they get back to this one-way communication piece. It looks kind of Victorian, Australian, right? I mean, this is a little tip of the hat to the British ancestry. All right. Um, I was told I could say things about Kiwis, but I should stay away from the Australians. As <laughs> <laughs> just, just wanted to put that out there now. Um, and Tasmanians apparently were safe. Uh, Tony tells me that. Um, so one-way communication was the biggest problem that I have with MDM in that I want, when things happen, if you've got a deterministic state engine, uh, something like Puppet or uh, OS Query or some of these other things, you want to have that interact with maybe profiles that you may be pushing. All right, so this is what I started thinking, and I started thinking, well, uh, may maybe we could figure this out, right? Um, there's got to be a way to kind of do this. Because that one-way configuration or communication, the biggest thing for me was the lack of a logic tree that you could apply to a profile. I want to check something, see if it's available, see if it's been done, see if it's working, and then either remediate that situation or maybe apply a different profile based upon that. And to do this, you've got to have some sort of logic flow that's involved in this. The other thing that I wanted to do, um, if you're using Jamf, uh, for example, you have policies that can do command line commands. You can't replicate those in the MDM set. That's not Jamf's fault. That's just because that's the way it is. All right, and I wanted to have one line CLI commands that I wanted to be able to push through MDM because I really like the concept of instantaneous uh, gratification, right? That's, hey, everybody does. Um, I like being able to say, do this command and push it out to all my sheet machines immediately and not have to wait for some sort of check-in or something else that's going on. However, if you do that, MDM doesn't have any real deterministic way of stating that this policy is going to hit before this one and will only run this next policy if this first one happens. So I said, I could put together some sort of command line functionality, but then I'd need a way to make it serialized. And that got very complicated very quickly to try and graph that onto an MDM solution. So I kept thinking, well, maybe there is a better way. And that got me to how to roll your own MDM agent, all right? Uh, ideally for fun and profit. Um, I, I don't know about the profit part yet, but we're getting there. Uh, I think there's something in it. It's definitely been fun as we've gone through this, and hopefully that continues to the demo that I will do shortly. All right, if it doesn't, I apologize in advance. Um, so what we'd like to add is kind of three things. The first thing I wanted to do when I set out to do this was to have the ability to run arbitrary CLI commands from a profile. So whatever your heart desires, whatever works on the command line, 
be able to pack this into a profile, put it up to the MDM server, and have it run on the client system uh, whenever that push happened. So that was the first goal that we had in exploring this. Uh, I was very interested in a way to get results back, right? Because if you do a command, uh, ideally you want to know if it worked, <laughs> you want to know if it even happened, and then you want to get some sort of result back so that you could follow another logic flow beyond that. All right, so that was the second thing I set out to do with MDM. And then finally, because you should be nice and always clean up after yourself, clear the configuration when you're done. Um, I didn't want to have uh, a CLI command, for example, uh, roll back an APFS snapshot. How cool would that be, right? Ah, who cares about imaging if I can roll back to the snapshot before the user ever logged in? Mm. All right, so that could possibly be a uh, CLI command because there's none of that in the MDM API at this point in time. But I know at least under 10.12, there is an APFS snapshot tool that's gone in 10.13. That's another story. But uh, yeah, take a look. You can copy over the 10.12 binary. We should maybe cut that out of the video recording. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's still in there. And my belief is, is that APFS gets more and more mature. You're going to see a lot of snapshotting technologies and things like that that could be very, very cool. But my use case here was, if I've got a lab of machines, and they've all been in some sort of dirtied state by a bunch of users coming in and doing all kinds of unholy things to them, wouldn't it be great if I could use a MDM profile to push out a snapshot rollback every day at 4 PM and have it roll back to the original state? I mean, it's almost like deep freeze, right, in some of the other products. Uh, but hey, you could do this all built into the OS if only you could push an arbitrary CLI command and then ideally get some sort of feedback and then clear that config. So with that kind of as the use case that we had for this, I thought, well, uh, I think we can do this. And, and I, I think we have. However, before starting, there very much be dragons here. Um, this is not a commercial product. I'm not promoting it as such. This is a thought experiment, and I'll post the code so other people can play around with. Although I was told I had to localize my uh, presentation, so uh, uh, I found a drop bear. There was a, a bun yap, bun, bun yip. But that seemed weird. Um, and, uh, and a koala with very large teeth seemed a lot more fun to me. Um, so there's, there's drop bears here. And you should be very careful going forward. But I'm excited about what we've managed to do and kind of the, uh, again, the thought process behind it as to what may happen. Um, Apple may break this at any time. <laughs> as you've probably been aware of, there's been a lot of conversation around agents going away. Um, and maybe not a time, or maybe a time in the future when you don't have root level access to the Mac, right? We've got all these scary boogeymen out there uh, of things that may or may not happen. I'm very happy to say that High Sierra has come out, or at least the betas have, and none of that seems to be in there. So I think we're safe for another little bit to be able to have root agents that can do things at the root level. Uh, and this is very important because obviously without root access, a lot of the things that you as an admin may want to do, like rolling back an APFS snapshot, get a lot harder going forward. All right, so some things we've taken to mitigate this. Um, the agent that I have, uh, we're leveraging MDM for all the conversations. So any sort of phone home or other pieces is being done through the MDM channel. Uh, so I have a very small Swift binary that I'll show you shortly that is sitting on the system, and it is just lo uh, listening for preference keys to change. All right. So if those preference keys get updated, if a command shows up, my agent will run it. But the agent itself does not have a socket that's open. It's not listening for communications, nor is it consistently phoning home asking for what's next. All right. So I try to do this very much within the confines of MDM and the good things that I liked about it. And that is actually fairly simple from a code perspective to do. Um, all done using the defaults APIs. If you've done any Swift work, the defaults API used to be NS user defaults. Uh, very, very simple and easy to use and provides a very easy way of getting and setting preferences without having to do a whole lot of work yourself. It's about three lines of Swift to do this. And so the sample code that I'll, that I'll submit once I clean it up and make sure it works today, uh, you can see that there's an observer that you can register for that just lets your app know whenever your defaults have changed. And so what we'll be doing is we'll be pushing a custom configuration profile that has a specific domain that's set for my app. My app will listen for any changes that happen to that default domain, and then we'll do something when that happens. All right? And it should be something cool. I should be. All right, so again, ideally leveraging MDM and APNS as much as possible. 
that just makes it very easy to future-proof the whole process. And I don't want to have to create a whole other layer of security on myself. I wanted to make sure that if we were doing something here, that it was a very minimal security footprint and would not increase your attack uh, surface. Uh, that's very important. So assuming that MDM is already there, because pretty much everyone raised your hand, that was something I could already leverage on. So that's what we're using for this. And then finally, as a matter of legality, I assume no responsibility, uh, just in a general sense, um, but specifically for, from what I'm about to show you in the code that we may share. All right, so with that all said, I'll give you the cast of, of characters that we've put together here. Uh, we've got a client system, you're gonna have to have that, something that the agent runs on, something that you're gonna have an action that happens with, all right? Uh, we've got a configuration profile. This is a pretty standard, just run-of-the-mill custom configuration profile. Pretty much any MDM solution should be able to push that. All right? We have an MDM server. Uh, I didn't have a handy pre-built icon on the Mac for an MDM server, so we've used a Mac Pro. Uh, I do not assume your MDM server is a Mac Pro. <laughs> Take that as artistic license. Um, since we are doing something that an MDM solution does not have built in, we're actually grafting it together a little bit, and I'm going to be using an Amazon API gateway, uh, which is a whole lot of fun for doing some very, very cool things with APIs with a very minimal amount of work. Um, I started using this uh, when the Jamf stuff came out with the webhooks. And the webhooks are really cool, but the webhooks didn't always fit in with Slack or HipChat or whatever else you might be going with. So then we started running them through the API gateway. And it's Amazon, and they don't have to make money, so I think you get a million API calls a month before you start getting charged for it. Um, so I'll show you a little bit, brief introduction to that, because it is kind of fun. So that's the web API host. We're also using Amazon Lambda um, to do some Python work. It's the first Python uh, I've written in about 10 years. So apologies in advance when I show you the Python, if it doesn't make sense. It, it didn't. Um, agent, that's what I've written in Swift, and that's what we're going to be showing. And uh, the basic workflow is going to be something like this. You've got an MDM server in the sky. You've got a very nice 13-inch MacBook Pro that makes the video go a little squidgy. Um, so that's in there. And we're going to push a configuration profile to the Mac. That configuration profile will show up, which will then have my agent do something. All right. So the agent does something, but we have to then accomplish two other goals. One goal is to get a result back, and two, to actually clear the profile. So this is what I'm using the Amazon API gateway for, in that we're going to do an HTTPS post to a gateway that I've set up. That gateway then holds an API key that will then call back to the MDM server and clear the configuration profile. Does that make sense? All right. And the reason why you could build this into the client itself, but I, I, I'm very hesitant to put API keys into the client where who knows what may happen to them. And most MDM solutions, it's great that they have an API, that's great stuff, but there's not a lot of granular protections around what that API can do. And it usually is an all in or all off piece, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm using the Amazon API gateway to do some sanitization, right? So I know that the data coming in is relevant, that I'm not just taking anything that somebody sends in and then turning it around and sending it off to the MDM server. And then I'm also keeping the MDM API key inside Amazon. And that way, that's protected. It's not locally on the client in plain text. And I've got a layer of security that's wrapped around this. All right? In a perfect world, and my, my not so very secret goal here is that if this kind of functionality works and is interesting, I'd love to see all of that stuff in blue get grafted into the green. All right? A perfect world for me is when I can deploy a configuration profile that has some sort of web callback already built into it so that I don't have to do any of this work and I don't have to set up this Amazon Web API piece. All right? Instead, it's just a natural part of MDM. So that's my, like I said, not very secret goal in what I'm doing all here, is to be able to kind of show people that this works well and is a valid use. So that MDM API call goes back to the MDM server. Uh, that configuration profile gets removed. And boom, we're now back to the state that we were in before. The action having occurred, a result having getting pushed back, and then the configuration profile being cleared. Does that make sense? This kind of diagram, generally cogent, beautiful. All right. So, demo time. 
All right. And um, Tony has assured me this is all going to work. <laughs> Which Tony are we talking about? All right, I have a VM here, which is restoring and starting back up. We get a little bit of an inception feel going on with Sierra Mountains over Sierra Mountains. I have an agent here that we are going to run. But uh, first, as the uh, magician passing the hoop over the floating assistant, we're going to go up to system preferences. We have an MDM profile here. I'll show you that in a little bit. And uh, I'm going to launch this agent. And this agent's going to run. And it's going to hang out here. And so we are now in the default state of the Mac, an agent running as a root user, and no profile having been there. All right. Hoop is now passed. The assistant is still floating. Now we show you where the wires are. All right, so I'm going to go over here, find my mouse. And, and I'm being a little secretive by having a second screen here so that you can't see what I'm doing behind the scenes here. This is a simple MDM, uh, MDM service, uh, very, as by its name, simple. And I use this uh, to do some stuff on non-production systems. And if I go over here to devices, I've got a BYO MDM agent area. I've got configurations. And I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to select BYO MDM demo. So this is a profile that I have sent down. Um, and it will be on the machine. The machine will do something. The something will then stop. And it will then clear the profile. I'll show you the profile when we're done, talk about the code, talk about some of the other back end stuff. All right, so if this demo works, when I hit save, very shortly you'll see something here. And then uh, we'll go. Now it's saved. The configuration profile should be pushed. There, you see that it worked? It's going? Oh, you didn't hear that. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah, and you're supposed to say something. There you go. All right, we didn't get the audio set up, maybe because the VM. But you saw it. Now it's, this is what you're not supposed to see because I'm not done yet with the agent. Um, all right, so we actually had a sound uh, played. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. I think I spelled it correctly with Zs, right? No? Well, you pronounce it with Zs. All right, well, fair enough. That wasn't in the tour guide when I showed up at the airport. Now, so a command, at least we have somebody in the, in the front couple rows that heard that. So I'm not crazy. That sound came out. Uh, we'll dub that in later so it's much louder. Um, thank you, Tony. Uh, there was a profile. That profile is now gone, although you got to be careful with profiles because they don't always update. And if I go back here and I do a refresh, you'll see that this box has been unchecked through no fault of my own. Boom. Pretty cool, huh? Nice little round trip that we did there. Had an action occur, had the profile get removed because of that. So let me show you some of the component pieces. Um, the first thing that we're going to do, so this is the actual profile that I was using. Um, and I have an app that we wrote for the Mac DevOps um, that actually opens these up. So this is pretty cool. It'll take a signed or an unsigned profile open it up and show you all the things that are in here. Um, I probably need to make this a little bit bigger, but you'll get the idea. It's a pretty simple um, custom profile. It's specifically for the Nomad helper domain, which is set by the MDM server that's in here. I had one command here, which is this command line that just says, say, Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. I had to put the Zs in there because the, the built-in voice otherwise wouldn't know, right? Um, but I was expecting a louder oi, oi, oi in return. I've watched the rugby games. Um, all right, well, whatever. Um, and then here's the actual callback. So this is the URL for something I've set up in the Amazon API gateway. So what my agent does is it sees this command coming in. It runs the command. And then the results and the fact that it's run the command then get posted back to the API gateway. The API gateway takes that information, does something with it, nothing at this point in time, but left as an exercise for the user. You could stash it into a database. You could do some other things with it. It then turns around and using an API key back to the MDM server goes in and clears that profile from the machine. So a little bit of glue that you've got to bring 
But I think this is a pretty elegant way of doing it, where now every policy that goes out, every profile, excuse me, that goes out could have a callback associated with it. That callback would allow the agent to alert the MDM server that something has been done and then act accordingly based upon that information. Exciting? Demo work, pretty cool. It's a little early. There we go. There we go. I should have planted a few more people in the audience to, uh, to talk about that. Um, so real quick, I can show you a little bit about the Amazon Web Services, because uh, this, like I said, is something kind of fun um, and is, is good, good stuff. Uh, the API Gateway allows you to just take a JSON payload, do something with it. Um, in its default, all you have to do is just attribute uh, swapping. So for example, if you're using webhooks from Jamf, that webhook comes as kind of a big web URL. You could send it here, and then by swapping out variables and adding in some of your own information, you could send it on to Slack, you can send it on to HipChat, and then have those webhooks show up there without having to do a lot of work. Uh, Lambda, which is misspelled there, that's unfortunate. We'll have to take that out as well. Please take note, Tony. Um, Lambda has a B in it, not just a D. Um, that is the Amazon way of running Python and other little bits of code to do little things. Uh, you don't have to set up a whole VM. You don't have to set up a whole host. You just have to put in a couple lines of Python. It runs it somewhere in the Amazon massive server farm and then comes back. We're using it here because with the API key and some other things, I needed a little bit of logic behind the API gateway to be able to do that. And since if you have an Amazon account, and you go to services, you find, I couldn't even fit them all on the screen. Uh, so there's like another row or two down below of all these things. So here's a helpful guide. Uh, there is Lambda, spelled correctly. And over here in a unrelated application services is the API gateway. So those are the two things in your Amazon Web Services account that you might want to be looking at when you do this. Um, this is an example of what the uh, API gateway looks like. And effectively, it, it kind of starts from the upper left and then goes, I wanted to use anti-clockwise here, but it, it doesn't. It's actually clockwise. Uh, so it goes anti-anti-clockwise uh, around the right and down and then back up. Yeah, the water goes differently in the toilet bowl. I've been watching it all day. Um, so the method request comes in. It's a post. Uh, and Amazon will give you a specific endpoint that you can use for all of your little integrations that you have. It goes to that integration request, which hands it off to Lambda. I've got a Lambda function that's about five lines of Python that takes the fact that it came in, uses the API key to then call the MDM service and remove the profile. Um, that's that Lambda clear profile that you see on the right. And then the response comes back. And you can pass it through. I'm not doing this right now. But the agent does that call back to the web host. The web host can actually pass information back to the agent. All right? So there's yet a whole nother process that could be accomplished here by the agent phoning home saying, hey, I ran this command and it came back this way. What do you want me to do? And the web host actually sending a reply that says, OK, now do this. That part's not been implemented, but it would not be very hard to be able to do that. And then you have a little bit of an out-of-band mechanism for communicating with your agent outside of the MDM space. Um, so that just comes around. And then Lambda can do a lot of things. You've got the entirety of Amazon or whatever other cloud service you want to use behind that, where you could be storing the results into a database. You could be logging this. You could be capturing this. You could be doing all kinds of good, fun stuff. All right? Um, wonderful. And a couple of things about Amazon Web Services. Uh, I like using this because definitely keep the sensitive things sensitive. Um, as much as I like using the APIs for the MDM services, I'm very, very hesitant to build that into anything that's client side. Because you then have to have that API key that's built into that, and that makes things very, very dangerous. Uh, partially because it's a plain text key, but mostly because there's not a lot of granularity sometimes on what those API keys can do. So you end up with a lot of just kind of crazy stuff. And then also the ability to sanitize is very important because having the, that actually in the right way is good. So here I'm going to show you this is my Lambda integration with my very potentially poorly written Python. And uh, this API key has already been cycled, so you don't have to use it. But you can see this concept that the API key is right here. And then I just do a simple delete command. 
and it really didn't like getting bigger here, did it? Um, well, you can see this a little bit. And I can post some of this up there um, so that you can see. It's just a very simple Python delete request to this URL that I've put in there using basic authorization and that API key to do it all. All right, so it's, it's nothing very complicated. I wrote it, and I'm not particularly fond of Python. Um, so that'll show you that that wouldn't be that hard to do. All right, um, so some really good stuff there. Um, all right, and maybe now is a good time to take a little pause and uh, questions before I go on to a few other things. Cool stuff, interesting. Interesting at what the possibility may be going forward to maybe graph this onto stuff. Um, I kind of like this as a good idea of being able to bolt on some use case specific pieces using a lot of off the shelf work and then maybe a little bit of, of, of application programming or something else like that. I have a question. Oh, you're going to help run mics. Well, run mics for nobody asking questions. Nobody asks questions. I got other stuff to talk about. All right. No. Oh, no. No. All right. Question. Monkey in the room. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, hey. Hey. Um, so, look, there's a lot. Obviously, there's the future is unknown, which you've already said. So, mm -hmm. MDM is here to stay. Uh, some of the agents, et cetera, that we use may disappear. Correct. Do you see in the immediate future uh, a case of using this type of functionality, rolling in you know, oh, your completely. own monkeys, your own puppets, et cetera, et cetera? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, the question is. Uh, you know, how does this interact with something like Monkey or some other non-MDM solution that you may have? Well, as I think we all agree, MDM is coming whether you want it or not. All right, so you're going to have to use that. If you want to do DEP, if you want to do some of the cool stuff that Apple is doing, you need an MDM solution. Greg has been very adamant that Monkey is not MDM, <laughs> and he has no interest in creating an MDM service or anything else like that. That's an exercise for the user. What I am excited about is there are some MDM products out there that have become very, very streamlined, and they end up just being a tube, all right? Um, and I'm excited that more and more of the raw MDM API is being exposed through some of these MDM solutions so that you can write to them directly, you can have them issue those MDM commands, and so now you're the one pulling the strings, and you just use that MDM tube for your own purposes. There's a little bit more work, but frankly, if you're using Monkey, you've already got that little bit more work that you're doing anyway. Um, so this just kind of wraps into it. Um, and I present this whole process not as something that I want to make my own, although we may, and I'll show you in a little bit some stuff that we've done this that'll be a little more commercial. Um, but I present this as because I think with Monkey, this could all be done by the Monkey agent. So it's a nice way of integrating something like Monkey with these callbacks into the profiles to be able to clear the profiles. And now Monkey can pull the strings. Uh, maybe I shouldn't draw this analogy out too much. But the Monkey can pull the strings on the MDM to then send commands to the Monkey and then back and forth around that, right? Does that make sense? I guess the thing, thing that's interests me a lot around this this space and topic is um, I've seen some some posts and some blog posts and stuff from guys like Eric Gomez at mm -hmm. um, exactly and, and that who's been kind of trying to formalize this concept of an MDM can sit there it can include these payloads these payloads can tie back into some of the tools that people are already using and therefore you get this happy happy hybrid solution mm -hmm. so I guess my side thought is where they would simply just throw in a payload to, to say directly enroll Monkey straight from the MDM sure. and not involve, say, Amazon in this process. Where is the advantage to, say, involve Amazon in this process with this type of workflow that you've, you've got there? If you could remove Amazon, as I'm not an Amazon shareholder, I'm more than happy to remove Amazon. I, ideally, this is all in one place, so you don't yet to have another console that you have to manage that is doing some of the same stuff. Uh, and since you brought up Eric, Eric's a great guy. He's now in Austin. We have beers on occasion. Um, and definitely some of this thinking came from what Eric had been doing with his unfortunately named install applications Python agent that runs the install application MDM command. Because um, he's effectively, again, using MDM as a tube. So his Python agent runs gets deployed by MDM. He then uses that to pull a JSON feed to pull down all the apps that he needs. 
Um, I worked with him on a little project called Depth Notify, which is out there to do a little splash screen for that. And this was kind of the next layer of thinking beyond that. Now that we're kind of getting into that space, um, you know, your toes in the water, uh, the horse is there. Um, there's other analogies that I could use, something with a drop bear, I'm certain. Um, you know, might as well go the rest of the way and make the circle complete. Other questions? All right, I will move on, and we'll show you a few more other things. Um, I don't want to dwell on this because it's something that will probably, uh, the kids got to go to college, so this is something that we'll probably do as a commercial piece. Um, but I wanted to provide kind of an example of how I'm using this agent with Nomad. Um, we were given the thought, at, Nomad's pretty cool, it can stop you from binding, we'll talk a lot more about that tomorrow, but then how do you make users admins on an ad hoc basis? So I'll be using this agent kind of functionality to pull that uh, user bits out of LDAP and Active Directory and push them more over onto the MDM side. And so by doing these arbitrary CLI commands and things like that, with an agent, I can now extend what MDM can do. And so now we're being able to deploy users via a configuration profile. And the end state for that is everybody's got an IT admin on their machines, right? It's the same name on every single one. Every single one, don't, don't raise your hand, but does it have the same password? Yeah, all right. And they're all admins, right? So you now have a known attack surface by having this account as an admin on every machine. If you're smart, you're cycling the password. But with that security comes a whole lot of pain in the rear, right? Because then when you do need to use that account, you got to figure out what the password is or recycle it again. So what we've been playing around with Nomad Helper is the ability to have no network access, again, respond to those key changes. Um, and then manage users, admin groups, and auth authorities. Um, so some really cool stuff that can become from here is that I can now manage machines, and I'm being, the, the screen here has gone yellow. Oh, and now it just went red. Speak of the devil. Um, so you can manage these objects. Come up and talk to me later if you want to learn more about this or watch my Mac DevOps YVR session from Vancouver about two weeks ago. Um, we won't do a demo. Um, but the use case that we have for that is I can deploy an admin account as needed via MDM. So you don't have an IT admin across all your fleet estate. Instead, when you walk up to it, you deploy it through MDM. And as needed, that admin uh, account gets set up on the machine, gets elevated to an admin. And then ideally, we've been having a lot of fun with these um, uh, YubiKeys. So for 40 bucks. 600 Australian, I think, right? Is that yeah. what the <laughs> it works out to? Um, you get one of these that's effectively a smart card, and it's not a password. So we can then associate that IT admin account on that particular machine to an IT YubiKey. And that user will then walk up. They'll become an admin with this. So now we have a whole lot of auditing, chain of custody, and everything else going through this. So there's been a lot of really cool stuff. So that's a lot of where I started with this conversation, so cool things coming soon. Um, so in conclusion, BYOMDM, good to know the limits of your tools, right? And kind of understand what you can do with MDM and what you could do maybe that was a little bit more than that. Um, good to understand new ideas can influence your workflow. I'm hoping that I spark some creativity of things that you want to do going forward and some fun stuff that you may have access to, uh, maybe things that you want to build yourself. If you haven't played around with the Amazon API gateway, I 100% encourage you to do it. Uh, like I said, I think you get the first million API calls for free. So you can try a few. Maybe they work, maybe they don't. Um, Lambda has some sort of cost to it, but I think it's pennies per thousand hours or something like that. Um, and allows you to do some cool things that you bring yourself in there. And then what I really like is that it's obviously very great to know that even within the confines of MDM, there's a whole lot of cool stuff that you can put together um, and kind of build it. And that makes me very excited for the future. Um, because definitely we're seeing in the US the resurgence of the Mac. It's a little more interesting in some of the uh, corporate environments. We're seeing people do some really cool things with it. And that's why we're, I think, again, iOS is a fad. Um, I'm still holding on to my Apple stock. But uh, you know, uh, we'll see. Uh, jury's still out. And I think there's some really, really cool stuff coming on that side. 
So with that, any questions? I don't think there is. The screen is blinking red angrily now. Um, oh, it even, does it have a countdown on how far over I am? It does, but it's in very small type down at the bottom. So now I'm intrigued to see what happens. Does it get angrier as it goes along? No, but I do. <laughs> well, I hesitate to make Tony any more angry than he is. Thank you very much. Hopefully this has been fun.